we all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced yeah. and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. What should homeowners be mindful of, given what we already went through as far as the nasty winter is concerned, and what the Farmer's Almanac is telling us is going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a nasty winter coming up. What are, what are some of the tips and tricks that you have for homeowners? Yeah, so the best things you can do for uh, your house going into the winter time is just kind of preparing it, uh, doing the basic maintenance things you should be doing, trimming back all the vegetation, making sure there aren't any branches overhanging the house. So if we do get heavy rains or ice buildup, it's not going to fall and damage the property. Um, making sure your gutters are cleaned properly so there's no extra debris built up in it, that they're pitched so that they actually drain where they're supposed to go, right. doing the basic maintenance things you should be doing, um, getting all the ground cl- uh, clutter away from the house as well as uh, the fog goes through with the leaves so you don't trap moisture against the house. All those things will help keep the water up. Talk about pre-home inspections. Uh, in general, how long do they take? Uh, just for a homeowner that's planning on scheduling one? Yeah, I usually spend probably about an hour and a half, two hours walking around the house, uh, looking at it the same way, like I said, as I would for a buyer and then relaying that information, but at the same time kind of coaching them on selling the house as far as uh, how to position their equipment that they have. Let's say they have... uh, a 20-year-old boiler, but Mm -hmm. they've serviced it year after year and they've done repairs, put together a portfolio of that. Anything that you've done for maintenance tips on the house, uh, if you have unique light switches that go to something, put a label on it. So trying to help them you know, put the house into a position that's going to make it easier for today's you know, the, the premise of, of starting the show was to be myth busters, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 sort of take out some of the fallacies out out of, in the uh, out of the process. Um, I think a lot of people that maybe f- they want to do a home inspection, they may think that they can rely on the home inspector's recommendation of contractors or talk to them about whether their home is up to code or or whatnot. Can you just uh, bust that myth? What are some of the things, scope and services that you provide during a home? inspection. Perfect. That's a good th- good segue on that. One, uh, a home inspector should never refer a contractor because we can convince anybody that they need to do something to a house. Sure. And if you call my cousin Joey, he can take care of it for you for a good price. So <laughs> right. you should never get that type of referral. Um, also, code violations are not what we're there for. We're there for function and um, safety. So, you know, unless the house was built this year, it's not going to meet code. So if I'm looking at a house from 1980, I have to look at it like a 1980s construction. So we're looking to make sure that things are uh, safe and functioning as they should, not necessarily new or up to today's code. Yeah. Give us a little bit of background on you and uh, you know, really special what you specialize in. I know we're talking today about VA, and uh, you also do some USDA stuff too, but uh, give us a little background. Well, it's funny that you should say because actually one of your uh, coworkers actually just even emailed me, can you do cash out on a VA? So um, there's a lot about the VA loan. There's really the two programs that are out there right now that are no money down um, and extremely competitive on the interest rates and the way that the programs are designed and, you know, very flexible in terms of, you know, getting um, approvals. We've actually been doing a lot more VA lately. There's just a lot going on. Um, Watch I say that, and then actually I'm thinking about how busy the USDA is also. There's a lot of uh, USDA loans going on, too. So just high volume and just um, two great programs that can get people into homes that typically um, might not be able to qualify otherwise. Elise, uh, I know that uh, we talked about no money down programs and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, automatically as someone who uh, may be listening in and, and, and may, may qualify for a USDA mortgage or may qualify for a VA, I mean, some of the misnomers that I've heard through the years is that these types of programs are hard to qualify. Uh, there's so many additional steps that you have to go through. Uh, you don't, you know, you're never going to meet the timelines that you've set forth in your offer. Those are the kinds of conversations I've had historically with listing brokers that get an offer from someone who wants to apply for a VA loan, and they see that the mortgage is going to be 100. percent Can you just bust some of those myths? <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It's funny that you you say that because we were just talking about that yesterday in our office as well. Because we sit here and we find it doesn't take us any longer to do either of those types of loans, 
And I think it also, you know, carries into dealing with lenders that are experienced with these products, maybe dealing with more local lenders that are going to give you a heads up. And let's just break down the two different loan programs. Uh, the VA, for example, requires two extra things that, say, like a conventional loan may not require. They, If the um, property is on private water, well water, they want a water test done, and they do require a pest inspection um, be completed on the property, which um, my clients will complete at the time of the home inspection. Mm. Now, if these two items are done in the beginning of the transaction, right, when people are doing the home inspection, it has. there's no reason that they would slow the file down at all because you, you're doing them up front. You still have 30 to 45 days to closing. They don't take... You know, that, you know, water test takes anywhere from five to seven days to have it completed, you know, tested and have the sample analyzed and completed. And the pest inspection is done right away on the spot. So there's nothing about it slowing down. I think what um, with the VA loan, when people say it slows down, oh, you have to send a VA appraiser out there. Well, they are regular appraisers. They just have a VA delegation. So that doesn't take any longer when we send a VA appraiser. And it doesn't, the, the pest inspection and the water inspection shouldn't slow it down either. The only thing that slows it down is when you have a lender that doesn't tell you up front that you need to get those two items taken care of, and you're doing them and scrambling at the 11th hour, and you know a week before the closing, someone tells you you need a water test. So we're finding with those, a lot of people, and um, I know Rick and I wanted to talk about that a little bit more too, is that when people aren't dealing with you know informed people or local lenders that are educating the buyer ahead of time, that's what can slow it down. Here's another myth that uh, at least I want you to elaborate on: it, it, Does it cost more to get a VA loan or a USDA loan? Are there? I mean, these are no money down, hundred percent financing programs. Are, are there are there costs associated with it that people need to be aware of? There are no additional closing costs versus any other regular loan that's out there. Both of the loans do have um, what's called an upfront funding fee, and that's part of like their, what you would say, like a private mortgage insurance because you're not putting any money down. Um, but it becomes part of the loan. So in terms of out of the pocket, you know, expense that the um, anybody would incur, there is no additional upfront cost. And even when it comes to the pest inspection, um, they do not have the veteran pay for that. So like that, like if you're doing a regular home inspection, the home inspector will do the pest inspection for the veterans. You know, we deal with certain home inspectors, and this is something that we can guide people to do at no cost to them. So we're, almost, you know, we're almost running out of time, but so VAs are obviously reserved for individuals that are veterans. There can Correct. be either active veterans or individuals that have already uh, or served. Re- yeah. served. Retired. Anybody that has um, military status. Yeah. Right. And USDA is reserved for whom? Um, USDA is based on location of the property and income eligibility. So any areas that offer the USDA, and there's a whole list of towns. Obviously, it doesn't work in downtown Boston, but it certainly works in some of the Which is unfortunate. You know, rural areas. I know, right. I know. Um, <laughs> And then, then there are some income limitations based on that program. So, again, they need to deal with a local lender that, you know, makes sure that they meet the criteria because I've had a few of those fall apart when people don't know to check the compliance income for each, you know, county and state and town that are involved. So if you're dealing with an out-of-state lender, you run into issues on those as well. Perfect. What distinguishes you, your team, your company from your competition? You know, I, and you talk about it, and we won't get into it because we're going to have another show about it, uh, but the real estate industry is about to get the, some of the biggest regulations that we have seen. You know, we've had, we've talked about Dodd-Frank, where lender, you know, compensation has changed for loan officers and certain disclosures have come out, but that's really just affected the mortgage process. Right. This whole TRID thing that's coming out on October 3rd uh, really comes down to uh, the whole real estate community as a whole. And, you know, I, I was on the phone with the uh, with a Boston Globe reporter the other day, and we were just talking about how, you know, my thought is, is bigger isn't always better in coming up, you know, in this, I never thought that, but coming up, I think is going to be, uh, show us that uh, even more because um, certain things, certain timelines are so set in stone that, you know, uh, the cl- closings have to be, or sorry, um, files have to be clear to close three days prior to the actually closing date. If that gets missed, everything gets moved and shifted. So, you know, I think that these larger lenders, um, you know, are, are going to really have struggles delivering on uh, on these timelines. And so, you know, we're a boutique mortgage uh, mortgage banker. And essentially what that means is, is we underwrite, we approve, we close, we fund everything under our roof. And, you know, that gives me the 
ability to be so nimble and be able to turn on a dime. I mean, we, you know, it's not un- uncommon for us to open and close a loan in 10 days. Uh, it's just the way that we're set up. We are, we can turn like that. I think those timelines are going to count, you know, be extended a little bit more now that we have these new guidelines coming into place October 3rd, but we still have the underwriting speed and all of that, uh, that makes us so fast. These Bigger lenders, these box, big box lenders, right. are going to really have a hard time delivering. Yeah, I mean, I think that at the end of the day, we're putting people in homes, and you know, it's it's such an emotional process for that one buyer, and they have to know that you're always there, and you can you're emailing back late at night, or te- I was texting a client at seven o'clock this morning. Well, they texted me, I'm texting them back, right. um, and you know that we're always accessible, and that we can because again, we understand that we do this day in and day out. I mean, you have hundred of closings a month. And, and sometimes we lose sight of, you know, it's a transaction for us, but it's someone's home for them. It's someone that, you know, that has saved up all of their money, who has been renting for so long. It's the American dream. It's all of that coming together. And, uh, you know, we just, we always have to remember that it's this one transaction for the client. And so that they need to be uh, held, you know, hands held, walked through, and just, you know, made sure they're comfortable about it. Mm-hmm.